yeah, home at last, home at last. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Eric Surf Six, and welcome to episode 200 of Eric Meal Time. Now, I just got off of work. I was down at the river. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starving. So I picked up a couple extra things at the store here. We got some wasabi. Wait a minute, what's this? Wet newspaper, don't need that. Here's the wasabi. Yep, gotta have extra wasabi. And let's see, what else is in here? The questions, yep, this is important. Got all the questions printed out, ready to go here. This is gonna be a fabulous mukbang meal. It's a mukbang, that's right. That means I eat all the stuff that is right in front of me right here now. That is the goal, to eat all of it. Episode 200, this calls for a celebration. What are we gonna start with? A beer, that's right. I'm gonna start with the Budweiser right here. Just for old time's sake, I'm American and I haven't had one of these in ages. Butt wiper beer. Now the way I learned how to drink Budweiser is you punch a hole in the bottom right here. It's right about there. And you just punch, punch it in there. Now, just like that. And then you widen the hole a little bit, let all the gas out. More or less, that's about the size of the hole you want right there. Yeah, got it? Okay, so you got your hole. You plug it with your thumb, and then you pull the tap, and it goes down the hatch. It's called shotgunning a beer. I think it's been it's been since high school or something since I've done this. So yeah, Budweiser, very appropriate beer for this. Here goes. Ah. <sighs> And it's done, just like that. Nothing like a little beer on the lens. Okay, now to set up the feast, wasabi. So for the sashimi dishes, this is sashimi here. No rice with this one. Wasabi. And here's another sashimi dish, wasabi. And the last sashimi, you see it over here. Is that in the frame? Barely. So plenty of wasabi, plenty of wasabi. Let's use all of it. Yeah, big fan of wasabi. Okay, looking good, looking good. Yes, alrighty then. Where am I gonna start? Show you here. Already got a little bit in there, but I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. Yep, gonna have some show you. Not too much. You can always refill that. All right, I think we are ready to grind to feast. Yes, let's do it. All right, I'm gonna start with some sashimi. My favorite, my favorite one is this one right here. This is the chu toro, fatty tuna. Love this stuff. Love, absolutely love this stuff. So. You can actually put quite a bit of wasabi on these. And because it's fatty tuna, the oil reacts with the wasabi and it's not that hot, surprisingly. It's, it's one of the best pieces of fish that goes with wasabi, I think. Right there, this guy. Yeah, all right, let's get into it. Definitely gotta have some of the shoyu on it as well too. And here we go. Oh boy. <laughs> it's like a piece of meat that just melts in your mouth. I, oh, fantastic. Look at how fast I just go for the next one, huh? No wasabi on this one, no time. I just want to eat it. Oh. Woo! That is so good. It really, it doesn't taste like fish. It tastes like meat. That's, yeah, meat. Okay, this one I'm gonna have with the uh, 
the leaf here. No, well, let the leaf. Oh, oh, it's good. A little bit of daikon. Wow. Oh boy. For a little piece of sushi here. What are we going to start with? We'll start with the egg. Let's keep it simple. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh. Mmm. So good. I'll tell you, I really worked up an appetite on that river today. Boy, that was a fun day. Yep. River surfing. Oh boy. It's a job, but somebody's got to do it. If you guys would like to see the full river surfing video, I'll link it right up here. Guy in the suit. Yeah, it's episode one. Mm-hmm. All right, let's eat some more. Let's eat some more. I've also got some ginger right here. This is to, uh, you know the deal, you cleanse the palate. Uh-huh. Oh, that's good. Love me some ginger. Okay, this right here is taco. Taco in Japanese is, taco in Japanese is taco. Taco in English is octopus. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very common. Well, a little bit fishy, but, but tasty. Tasty. And this is the squid here. Also one of my favorites. Yeah. Squid. Oh. So good. So good. It took me a long time to learn how to eat the squid and the octopus, to be honest. Like, several years. But right away, I could eat this one, the magudo, the tuna, any of the tunas I could eat right away. This, this type of tuna, this type of tuna. The salmon over here is a good starter sushi. Yeah. Oh. This is good, too. Yeah, salmon comes in a bunch of different grades as well. So, the fatty salmon as well, too. It's it's very similar to the to the toro. Oh yeah. Okay, that was a pretty good start. Well, I'm just gonna eat a little bit more before I get started with the Q and A. You guys don't mind, do you? I am starving. Yes, and maybe another beer too. So I want to introduce these beers. There's four of them, and these are the main four big ones in Japan. So here they are. You've got Kirin, you've got Santori, and you've got Asahi, and you've got Sapporo. These are the big four, everybody. These four companies dominate the beer market in Japan. Probably 90% or more. It's amazing. Yep. So which one do we try? Which one do we try? This one's kind of special. This is a black beer. Okay, so it's it's dark. It's like a Guinness. I'll save this for a little bit later. Sapporo I had last week for my vending machine video. So let's try a different one. I guess the Asahi. This is actually the number one beer in Japan right here. Asahi Super Dry. So this is the winter version. I don't think they actually changed the flavor or the taste of the beer, but it's just the, the can. They um, make it a little fancy. All right. Let's do it. <clears throat> cheers, cheers, cheers and beers. <sighs> wow. I'll tell you, compared to the Budweiser, much nicer flavor, much more pleasant. Well, it's a good beer. Mm -hmm. Probably better from a glass, but hey. I don't need to be fancy here. This is supermarket sushi. <laughs> so, the whole cost for this meal, the whole everything, the beers, the extra wasabi was, can you guess how much it was? Less than $35 for all this. Not bad, huh? 
Really, not a bad deal. This over here, I haven't introduced this yet. I'm going to tell you what this is later. This is a delicacy in Japan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to save that for later. So, maybe one more piece of sushi and we'll get started with the Q&A. Mm. What are we going to eat? This one. Amaebi. Amaebi. Sweet. Uh-oh. A little stickage going on here. There we go. Yep, oh my, this is the, this is probably the cutest one. Dip it. One bite. I'm not gonna eat the tail this time, but it's optional. You can eat the tail if you like. Mmm. Mm. Oh, two tails. Pleasant. I like the sweetness of the sweet shrimp. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to describe it. Sweet shrimp. Just call it sweet. And it's not fishy. Surprisingly, it's not fishy. You don't smell fish here. I mean, I'm eating fish, but I'm not smelling fish. That's the beauty of eating fresh fish in Japan. It doesn't smell fishy. No, nope, it does not feel like it just came out of the ocean. But it did. Mm-hmm. All right, what's next? Another sip of asahi. Oh, that's good. That is a good beer. It's a really good beer. Yeah, actually, I haven't had Asahi in a long time. It's probably been, I don't know, maybe six months, a year. I think I should get started with the Q&A here. Let's start with the video questions. Who's first? What's your favorite holiday in the U.S.? And what is your favorite holiday in Japan? Well, that's a nice timely question, Arthur, being that Christmas is right around the corner here. So that's my answer for America. Definitely Christmas, because that's the time when everybody gets together. You see family members. And for Japan, it's New Year's. And basically, New Year's is sort of treated how Christmas is treated in America in Japan. It's more, you get, it's a whole week worth of holidays. You go to a temple, you eat special foods. There's a lot of interesting things that happen during New Year's in Japan. It's a very interesting time to be here. The whole country shuts down for business. Nobody's working. Everybody's in a good mood. Nobody's in a hurry to go anywhere. People are happy, friendly. New Year's is a really nice time in Japan. All right, let's eat some more here. So the food here with the most powering smell and aroma is this right here. I really feel like I have to dive in for this. This right here, it's cooked. It's fish, but it's actually, it's, what the heck is this called? I forget. Freshwater eel. It's called unagi. Yeah. And it's got a sauce on it, but you can put some more sauce on it. Sauce. And there's also uh, like a spicy seasoning. It's called sancho that you can put on top of it as well. So I'm going to add more of both just for fun. Here's more sauce. I mean, it's got sauce on it already, but... You know, it's the more the merrier, right? Okay, and this is like a powder. Yeah. Sancho. Oh, boy. Love the smell of that stuff. Mmm. Okay. Drop the chopstick. Okay, so this is on a skewer, so you have to take it off the skewer first. Mm-hmm. It's actually, it's on four. There it comes. So this is cooked over. It's cooked on a grill, basically. And yeah, eel. So don't be afraid of eel. You know, the, before I the, before I tried eel the first time, I was afraid of it. I thought, oh, eel, a snake. It's like, I don't want to eat that. But this stuff, it's like eating meat. This is it's fantastic. And this sauce that they put it in, and the seasoning, it's oh, it's just, it's fantastic. Mm. Oh, <laughs> one bite. <laughs> chewy, chewy, rich and gooey. Oh, it's good. Well, you know, being store-bought, I get it. You know, it's not going to be as tender as buying it in a restaurant. I recommend that you go to a restaurant and have this because 
it's much more tender. But you pay a lot more. See, this the price for this was about five dollars. If you go to a restaurant and have this, you're gonna pay you know, probably forty dollars or something. It's it's quite a bit more. So yeah, it's a different game. So there's different levels of the unagi, the, the uh, freshwater eel. And the other one is the anago or the sea eel. Well, so, but I've got an idea here. The other thing that can happen is if this were cut into bite-sized pieces now, it would taste really good and you wouldn't have to chew it as much. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to, I should have washed the scissors first, but they look pretty clean. In the essence of time, <laughs> let's cut it up a bit. Let's... Yep. Oh yeah. There we go. Dining hack right here. Yeah. That's what you do. That's what you do. So now that you've got it into manageable bite-sized pieces, huh? Look at that. You can even just go and dip it in the sauce right there. A lot more control. Mm-hmm. And then just pop them in your mouth. Whoo! That is the way to do it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Now we're going to polish this off right away. Stop. <clears throat> it's time to answer another question. All right, buddy. Um, What is your favorite food that you like to eat? If you had to choose one. My favorite food? Well, I'll tell you what. I just recently discovered it, and it's coming up in Eric Mealtime, episode 205. So... Look out for it. Hi, Eric. What is your military background? I did a three-year tour in the Army. I worked as a finance clerk, and I was stationed in Hawaii. So I learned how to surf big waves. What's your favorite Japanese fast food? Your favorite Japanese food? Mm, well, I think I'd have to go with katsukare or pork cutlet curry. That's my go-to food. I mean, basically, that that's comfort food in Japan. Hey, I just wanted to ask, if you were still married or if you divorced and how did you end up living in Japan? I have been married for 22 years Jonathan and my wife prefers not to be on camera and I think it's because she works for the government. And question two, I first came to Japan on an entertainment contract. I was doing my juggling act traveling around Japan and it wound up turning into a 15 year career. Oh, these questions are making me thirsty. What beer's next? This one. Let's do the premium malts right here. This one's from Suntory. Yeah, big beer company. One of the big four. This one's a bit smoother. A bit smoother than the Asahi. But the Asahi's got more of a bite to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're both good. But this is smoother. Easier to drink. The Asahi's got a bit of an aftertaste. Mm-hmm. It's premium. Yeah. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. All right, next question. I was wondering, what was your favorite and what was your least favorite place when you're doing these Eric Mealtime. Who was that question from? Lucas Mucus? Lu Lucas Mooser. Lucas Mucus? What did I say? My favorite place was in episode 100. It was the Japanese barbecue. The name of the restaurant is called Jojo Inn. Never forget that place. Fantastic. You can go back and look at it if you're interested in uh, Japanese uh, yaginiku barbecue at your table. Yeah, fantastic place with the view. And the least, I'd probably have to say the Loteria Burger, the, oh, what was it? It was called the Kobe Burger. It was awful. I was expecting Kobe beef, and it was just like meatloaf. It was awful. So false advertising, if you ask me. I didn't taste any flavors of Kobe beef in there whatsoever. It was just this horrible, just muck. What is next? Let's go for some sushi here. This one, Ikura. I like this one. My son's like this too, you know, it's got the little balls in it, right? It's, what is it, salmon eggs? 
Yeah, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm-hmm. This is another one that I didn't used to like, but now I've acquired a taste for it. Mm-hmm. Let's get another piece of the salmon here. Full wasabi treatment. Yeah. Full wasabi treatment. Oh. Here it goes. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Allow me some salmon. Followed by the tuna on the tablecloth. <laughs> yep. Fatty tuna. This is my favorite. Fatty tuna. A moment of silence for the fatty tuna. One more. I guess I, that's the problem, though. You know, you have one piece, and you want to have another piece, and you want to have another piece. And then if you're in a restaurant, you know, you've spent 50 bucks, you know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like that. But, yeah, this, this stuff... And you can put as much wasabi on it as you want, and it doesn't get that hot. It's, it's amazing. You can really, you can load it up with wasabi. Right? And it, it, somehow, the consistency of the fish cancels out the wasabi. But, but at the same time, I mean, it's just, it's delicious. It's just not overkill. Like with other sushi, when you put wasabi on, <clears throat> when you put wasabi on other types of sushi, though, Sometimes, I mean, it's just so overpowering. It's just your sinuses will just start dripping. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can you guys tell I'm enjoying this? this? Oh, it's gone already. Oh, no, that is not cool. Not cool. I really should have saved a piece of this for later. Yeah. What was I thinking? I should have saved it for last. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, because it's a mukbang, I need to eat everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Even the mint leaf. But this time, I'm not going to eat the flour. That was a mistake. I ate the flour in a previous video, and that's... Not what I want to do this time. Mm-hmm. Mm. All righty. The Premium Malts by Santori. It's a good beer. Next question. This is Amit Bansal from India, Delhi. Kindly suggest me some uh, great food sources and uh, on the way restaurants between Tokyo to Osaka. Uh, road trip. Amit from India. Thanks for the question. You're going to be traveling in Japan. You need to try the convenience stores, the Ekiben lunch boxes, and also don't forget to try the sushi. That's right. You got to have sushi as well too. I've been watching your channel since you started the uh, pencil trick tutorial series. I think nine or ten years ago. And my question for you is, after so many years of living in Japan, do you consider to be assimilated to their culture? And if you consider Japan to be your permanent home, or is it the United States? Rumus in Romania. Have I assimilated to Japanese culture? To a certain extent, yes. But Japanese culture goes deep, and it's got a lot of history. So there's no way I'm ever going to grasp everything about grasp Am I slurring my speech? Yeah, probably. Let's have another beer. As far as my permanent home, I, nothing's permanent. I mean, I've lived in Japan for quite a while now, but I could see going back to America. I, I like both. 
And now it's time for the comment questions. First one, Commander Jameson asks, will we see Guy in the Suit in 2018 again? Well, you're seeing him right now, the Guy in the Suit. And yes, I would really like to bring back the series. I've done 10 episodes of Guy in the Suit. And basically, if you're not familiar, he goes out on these adventures and he does stuff dressed in the suit. It's outdoor, extreme sport kind of stuff. And it's a lot of fun, but it... Uh, it takes a toll on the on the guy in the suit a little bit. But yeah, I, I think I'm gonna do more. Yes. The answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. Next question. Marcus Andre asks, are meal times all you do now? Not complaining, just wondering. Next question is from Marcus Andre, and he asks, Next question is from Marcus Andre, and his question, Are meal times all you do now? Not complaining, just wondering. That's a good question. The meal times have become twice a week because there's a following of people that really want to see me eat food, I guess. I think that's what it is. So I'm going with that, but I'm also going to be doing additional videos in 2018. I'm going to be bringing back the Tricks and Puzzles videos. I think the new series is going to be called, not sure yet, it's a working title, Eric Challenge Time. What do you guys think of that? Eric Challenge Time, where I challenge you to a trick or a challenge or a puzzle or something unique, interesting, exciting, bizarre. Yeah, because that's what I used to do on YouTube, and I gathered quite a following doing those way back when. It was 10, 8 to 10 years ago is when I was doing all those, and I just... Basically ran out of tricks and puzzles, but now I'm kind of like motivated again and I've got a whole nother list of things that I can do and add to it. So bringing back the old series and combining it with some new stuff and calling it Eric Challenge Time. What do you guys think? Would you watch that content once a week video? So I'd still do the Eric Meal Times and then I'd start the Eric Challenge Time series as well. So basically three uploads a week. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see the new series. Yeah, I'm probably going to do it anyway, but... I would very be very curious to hear what you have to say. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's eat some more. Let's eat, eat, eat. All right, we haven't even touched this plate over here. We have not touched this. This is the sushi rolls over here. Look at that, huh? Which one do we go for first? This one right in the middle, of course. This is the cooked shrimp. Mm-hmm. Cooked, baby. Yep. Here you go. Oh, way too... This is how you know when you put too much shoyu. Be careful when you dip your sushi into the shoyu. You don't want too much. Oh. That's oh, good. That is really good. It's the only one that's cooked. Well, this is too. The eel is also cooked. But other than that, everything's raw. Yeah. Let's polish off this eel. Oh, so good. Ooh. Oh, boy. Here. Get in there. There's three pieces left. You guys try some. Do not be afraid to try the eel if you come to Japan. Okay? Trust me. Trust me. Quality eats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a fabulous meal. Let's bring it in a little closer here. We're bringing it in. It's, it's shrinking a little bit. This is a, they call it in Japanese, a salad roll. Okay. It's got the crab, it's got the egg, and it's got, what is that, tuna, and some lettuce, some uh, sesame seeds. But here's the thing, this crab is not real crab. Yeah, it's imitation crab meat. So the price is really cheap. But it's very popular. So, yeah, we'll give it a go. Oh, 
<laughs> wow. Wow. This is really good. I'm, I'm tasting uh, like sesame oil or something. There's, It's got something rich in it. Yep. A lot of different flavors mixed in with this. And the crab, <laughs> for being imitating crab, it's surprisingly good. Oh. Woohoo! You know, it's not often that I eat and then I do a hoo-hoo. Only very, very special kinds of food like sushi and sashimi. Don't just let out a hoot for any meal or they'll think you're crazy. Next question is from Dog G. How long have you lived in Japan and do you miss the States? Keep the vids coming, Eric. Uh, I've been in Japan 26 years of my life. Half of my life. Yep. And I do miss the States sometimes, but I go back once or twice a year, so... I'm all right with it. CVGBCS asks, hey Eric, long time fan here. My question is, what was the hardest thing to adapt to when you first moved to Japan? Well, two things really, the language and the food. It took me a long time to be able to eat Japanese food. Something like this, no way would I have been able to eat this when I first arrived in Japan. Probably a third of it. Yeah, I wasn't fond of fish when I first came to Japan, but now I love it, so. Yep, it's an acquired taste, and it's an acquired language. Yep. Question by Bernie G. When will you go to Tokyo Tower or Tokyo Sky Tree? I've been to both already, but I didn't make videos of either. And the reason why is everybody makes videos of those places. Tourist traps, tourist spots, landmarks. It's not really my thing. I kind of like to do things that are a little bit different. Yep, except sushi. <laughs> I'll probably cut that one out, yeah? And what is the funniest food you have eaten in your videos? That's by Heavy Face. And <laughs> the funniest food I've eaten. Well, I'd have to go with the Bean Boozled Challenge. It's more of a snack, really. Jelly beans. But I did that with my nieces, my son, and my dad, my sister. Fun video. Huang Jen asks, is konyaku a jelly? Konyaku. I don't know. I think I need to go to Wikipedia and figure that out. Konyaku. Does anybody know? Is it a jelly? Put it down in the comments if you guys know. Konyaku. I've eaten it enough times here on the Eric Mealtime series. It's it's in a lot of dishes. Basically, it's flavorless, and it seems like a jelly, but I'm not really sure, to be honest. I think it's a plant. Shane Shanawaz asks, Would you do an episode in Australia trying food like kangaroo or crocodile? Yes, I would. Definitely. And actually, I'm going to Australia coming up here in uh, February 2018. So I'll definitely be doing some mealtime videos there. Hmm. Kangaroo? Crocodile? Hmm. What do you guys think? Would you like to see that? Question by Michael Crespo. What is the most... No, wait. What is the worst experience you have had anywhere when it comes to food? Really disappointing. I mentioned that already. That is the Kobe burger from Loteria. Yuck! April Adair. Hi, Eric. My question is, will you ever do a live stream? You should. Love from Washington State. I really want to do a live stream. One of these days. It's coming. I promise. Yep. I definitely want to do it. The next question is from Broto Man, and he asks, Is there much of a craft beer, traditional beer market in Japan? Well, mainly it's the big four right here. Well, we're down to three right now. But, yeah, um, there is a craft beer market in Japan, but it's very small. But you can find IPAs in Japan now. They've recently surfaced, yeah. Speaking of beers, let's open another one. What's next? Let's try the black beer. The Kirin. Yeah, this one's kind of exciting. Black beer. Oh, yeah, can you see? You probably can't see the color. I'm going to pour this one in a glass. No. I think everybody understands the color black. It looks like this. Yeah. Okay, here goes. Kieran. Oh. It's a good beer. This is This is right up there with Guinness, I think. Way to go, Kieran. Nice. 
Price for these beers is about $2.30, maybe a little less, two ten, two twenty, dollars yeah, something like that. Okay, so let's eat some more here. What are we going to do next? This one, this is not one of my favorites. I think it's called Thai. Do you guys know? What is this common one called? I should know by now. I've been in Japan so long, but this one, it's very common. What is the name? I'm going to guess Thai. Yeah. It's pleasant. It's easy to eat. Not fishy. Mm-hmm. It's good. But I don't like it as much as the salmon or the tuna. So, salmon. Okay. I'm going to get this one out of the way because I don't like it. I feel like it's staring at me. This is the hotate, the scallop. Not one of my favorites. If I get rid of it, I'll feel better. Hmm. I mean, it's shellfish, you know. The only shellfish that I really like is lobster, crab, and shrimp. Outside of those three, yuck. Mm -hmm. Let's try this one. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah. This one's fancy. Mm -hmm. It's crunchy. Oh. Mm-hmm. Do you want some artificial grass? Oh, yeah. My favorite variety plate is this one. It's the four different ones on a plate. You can find these all over in Japan if you go to a supermarket. And the price for this is about six bucks. Four different kinds of sashimi. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Comes garnished. You have the nice daikon here. Radish that it comes with. You can dip this in the shell you to the flavor at. Mm-hmm. So you're actually getting a bit of uh, salad as well, too. I think. Mm -hmm. Are you guys familiar with the shiso leaf? The shiso leaf right here. It's in the mint family. It's got a very potent taste. Yes. It took me a long time to learn how to eat these. As with parsley. Similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get some Magudol. Magudol. Basic tuna. We're running out of show you. Show you refill. Oops. Way too much. Black beer from Karen. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Next question is from Astroworks BCN. And the question is, I know a lot of people is going to ask the same question, but here I go. Is the camera guy lady the same person in all the videos? Does he, she share the meal with you or does he, she just record you? Please do not reveal his, her identity yet. <laughs> Um, okay, so I use several different people for, for camera, and right, right now the camera's on the tripod, so it's just me here. So some of the people that, that 
do camera for me, they don't want to be seen on camera, like my wife is one. And there's a couple other people that also don't want to be shown on camera. And basically, there's a lot of people that just don't want to appear on camera, and I, I respect that. So I, I hope you guys can understand that as well, too. But I am going to reveal one of my camera people. It's coming up in a video soon. I think it's Eric Meal Time number 205. So you, I will, in the future, try to introduce you to some of my camera men, women. Yes, and let me assure you of something. The camera person always eats. Yes, always. And typically sushi. It has wasabi on it already, right? But it's nice to add some as well, too. You put some on top. So, yeah, it's always okay. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Are we having fun yet? Go for a giant bite of squid. Oh boy. Oh. Squid is so good. Squid. The consistency of squid is really interesting because it's tough at first, and then once you start to chew it, it breaks down usually pretty fast. Interesting. Let's try this one. This is another one that's not one of my favorites. I think. This one might be cooked as well, too. It's uh, not really sure. Not one of my favorites. It might not even need to show you. Anagua. I think this is a sea eel. Yeah. Yes, it is. Hmm, surprise me. Salmon sushi. Mm-hmm. And the last piece of this one. Last piece. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yummy, yum, yum. Mm-hmm. All right, two mint leaves. Definitely need to show you. Nope. All right, this dish is done. Let's transfer the wasabi over here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's bring it in. Let's bring it in. Yep. We are getting through this. We are getting through this. The biggest problem might be running out of beer. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's answer some more questions. Who's up next? Leanne Genevieve asks, How comfortable do you feel in Japan after North Korea keeps sending out test missiles? Love your channel. I think a lot of it is propaganda. I'm not worried about North Korea at all. I don't think their missiles can do anything, nor do I think they would do anything to harm any other country. It's, it's, it's all show. Next question is from Critical Eats Japan. I gotta check out this guy's channel because he does food reviews too. Yeah, uh, the question is, what is your favorite burger or burger joint here in Japan? That one's coming up in episode Warren Okuma asks, what is the secret of life? Hmm. Hmm. Well, you could start with watching The Secret on YouTube. It's about the law of attraction. Yeah, it's a good start. Ask me again in the next Ask Eric Surf 6 after you've watched that and we'll continue. Next question is from Erin Stench. Erin Stretch. And she asks, will you go to a maid cafe or a cat cafe? 
I've actually been to both, but I didn't make a video of either. So I suppose uh, drop it down below if you guys would like to see that. I guess I, I'm not really a cat. Anything you like. Shanef179 asks the question, what does the food at your university look like? Well, it's huge. There's 25,000 plus students. There's 10 restaurants, five convenience stores. Most of it's junk food, to be honest, but uh, I like the salads at the convenience stores. Yeah, the rice balls. Next question is from Owen5. This type of travel food videos that you do are my favorite. Those running ones are fun too, since I am also a runner. Why don't you do magic videos anymore? I'm gonna start doing magic videos again, yes. Uh, it's gonna be in the form of uh, a challenge. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier in this video. So Eric, challenge time for a new series. Tricks, puzzles, magic tricks, um, other cool and interesting unique things that I think are cool and that people have never seen before. That's the kind of stuff I want to do. I want to be always trying to show new things that are different or retro stuff that hasn't been seen in a long time. Introducing it to the new audience, the new generation. Yeah, bringing back the old school stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know, we're halfway through the questions? Oh, I need a drink. The black beer is tasty, but it's hard to get through. It's kind of like syrup. Okay, done. Last one, Sapporo. Sapporo, baby. This is up in the north from Hokkaido. Snow country, Japan. Yeah, gotta love Sapporo. I feel like I want to go snowboarding. It's going to be like an hour-long video. Is anybody still watching? I guess the plan is to finish eating the sushi at the same time I finish answering the questions. So we'll eat a little bit. Yeah. Mmm. -hmm. Tuna roll. Mm -hmm. This is cooked tuna, so it's like tuna mayo. One of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can get the tuna mayonnaise in rice ball form, too. Mm-hmm. It's probably the most popular one. It's called tuna mayo in Japanese. <clears throat> okay. A little bit of sapporo to wash it down with. Next question. Let's see. Problem Panda. How are you going to celebrate the 200th episode? Sister Discordia asks the question, what's the favorite place you have been to in America? Las Vegas, <laughs> the Grand Canyon, Southern California beaches. Oh, I could go on and on. Yeah, America's amazing. And there's another question here. Favorite place you have been to in Japan? Probably Niseko, the ski resort. I love that place. Since it's, it's coming up on winter here now, it's getting cold. I want to go snowboarding, so yeah. Snowboarding up in the north of Japan with Sapporo beers. Yeah. One more question from Sister Discordia. And what is the kanji for gnome, gnome, gnome? I have no idea. The kanji for gnome, 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 the Japanese character? I think the closest translation for nom 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 would be cho oishi. So for the Japanese that are watching, can you let me know? Cho oishi. Cho oishi. Nom nom nom. Next question is from Verified One. Are you verified? Do you have a certain timeline that you stay in Japan then return to the States? Or do you mainly stay in Japan? Well, my day job is I teach at a Japanese university, so I get two very long holiday periods, one in the summer, one in the winter. So those are my time frames for going abroad or going back to America. This one's kind of a kid's one. It's got this sort of tofu sort of covering to it. It's a popular one with the children. 
KK2 Gara asks, what is your favorite vending machine food that you can get in Japan? Well, I just did a vending machine video in episode 199. So have a look at that. It's the last video. And I tried every item in the machine. There were seven items. I ate every single one. So go take a look. The yakisoba was best. Yakisoba. Fried noodles. The next question is from Destiny Rowe. And she asks, what does your son do in California? I'm dying to know myself. I, I think I need to phone him up. It's been a while. Yeah, I can get him on video call here. What's ringing? Hey, dude's got it. Somebody wants to know, what are you doing in California? Hey there, you guys. This is the Dude's Got It. Um, what do I do here in California? I surf. Uh, I worked as a raft guide this summer on the Kern River. A lot of fun. Great job. Um, my dad took some footage of the rafting experience. Um, I'm working on the video right now. Um, you guys will probably see it pretty soon. Also, I might go up to Colorado, get out of California for a bit, and get a winter job and do a bunch of snowboarding this winter. So that's the plan for me, and that's about it. So back to you, Pops. Next question is from Grandpa Rick. How expensive is Japan? It's pretty similar to the cost of things in America, I would think. Japan has, has gone through this deflationary cycle for the last 10, 15 years. So it used to be really expensive, but now there's a lot of value to be had in Japan. Some things are expensive, some things are cheap, but you, you can kind of choose your way, actually, as far as how much you want to spend in Japan. So you don't need a lot of money, you can get by, or you have a lot of money and you can be extravagant. There's both. Next question, Krista Ellis, have you ever eaten natto? Yes, and that's one of the foods that I just can't stand. It's fermented beans and it's gooey and it smells and it's... But I'm going to keep trying. Yeah, I will eat natto again in a future video, yes. Yep, definitely. Those acquired taste items, I want to get them down so I can eat anything in Japanese cuisine. So, yes, I will try again. Watch for it. KSX say, how long do you want to make the next video? I love your long videos. Well, this one might break a record. I think the longest I've done is 31 minutes, 32 minutes. Yeah, um, I don't know. It, would you guys like to see longer form content that's not edited so heavily? I, I don't know. It's it's really up to you guys. I mean, kind of my idea is 30 minutes is feels like max for me. But if I did some on location stuff, I could easily make them longer and add in footage of like, you know, traveling and things, you know, daily vlog type of stuff. If you guys would like to see that, um, it's it's really up to you guys. So let me know. We're getting down to the end of it here. There's four pieces left. Four pieces left, plus a huge chunk of wasabi. Uh-huh. What are we going to do? The egg? Let's do the egg. Egg sushi. The egg is also a sweet one. Sugar has been added. Mm-hmm. Mukbangs are tough because you got to eat everything. Definitely challenging. Mm-hmm. Definitely challenging. All right. Are there any more questions? Next question. Frederick Coney. Hey, Frederick. The question is, you always eat so much. What do you do against growing love handles? <laughs> They're gone. I used to have them, actually. But... Then I adopted a plant-based diet. So outside of the Eric Mealtime videos, I honestly eat very close to vegan. And it's hard to believe after watching all the videos and stuff that I've eaten. But I only do this, it's two meals a week basically for Eric Mealtime. And what I'm eating aside from that is mostly fruits and vegetables, nuts and beans. It's high nutrient stuff low calorie most of it and you'll lose weight i exercise quite a bit as well too but basically i eat what i want i just try to avoid meats and dairy as much as i can that's sort of the trick except when i'm shooting an eric meal time try to eat foods as close to their natural state in nature as you can that's the secret to eating okay 
Well, that being said, let's get back to the sushi. Three pieces left. Which one are we gonna do first? Let's do this one. This is the Ikar, the squid sushi. Mm-hmm. You can't really put wasabi on this one. For some reason, you can put a little bit, but that's about it. Uh-huh. You have to experiment with sushi and wasabi levels. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nom nom. Oh, squid sushi. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Delightful. Mm -hmm. We're down to the last couple here. Down to the last couple. Mm hmm. So here's how it's going to go down for the last few things we've got here. Well, wasabi counts too, I suppose, huh? No. Yep. Let's finish up the uh, the pickled ginger here. Mm -hmm. This is called gutty. One. Three items left, plus the beer to wash it down. Okay. Did I answer your question okay there, Frederick? You know, Frederick lives in Switzerland, and he is one of my best... How do I say? One of my best interactive people on YouTube. He comments on almost every one of my videos, and I, I have really gotten to know this guy over the period of the last few years. Frederick, you are awesome, man. Thank you so much for your support. It's people like you that make me keep going. Yep, and all of you as well. When you comment and you let me know what you think of a video, good or bad, it's the, it's really it's the interactive part of this that makes me feel like I'm not just sitting here alone eating a meal, really. So I really appreciate you guys watching. So that being said, let's move on. A couple more questions, and we'll be done. We'll wrap this thing up. We'll rate it. We'll wrap it up. The next question is from Angel R, and the question is, just wondering how you decided to start making the mealtime food videos. Well, I was a huge fan of Epic Meal Time back in the day when they were just getting started and their channel was exploding. And I liked the idea of eating big and making sort of kind of specialized things. And I still, to this day, I really respect those guys for the innovation that they, they did for food on YouTube. So the first couple of videos that I did, I would make my own little concoction. I think the first video was a BLT sandwich and the second was a crab sandwich. And right here, sitting in this exact location actually. So it's a bit nostalgic sitting here. So you can go back and watch those videos if you like. You can just search for them, Eric Mealtime 1 or 2, whatever by number, and you'll see. So yeah. Thank you, epic meal time. Thank you, Harley. Love you guys. All right, let's eat. <laughs> let's go for uh, let's go for the magudo again. Yeah, some of these, you know, they're being repeated. I'm eating these over and over again, but that's what mukbang is. You eat, you eat, you eat until you drop. Hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, spicy. Oh, starting to slow down on the beer here. Not that it's not any good. Sapporo. So it should be pointed out that all of these major beer manufacturers or breweries in Japan, they've got several different versions of beer that they offer. So this is the black label, the classic, the one that I think Sapporo became known for in the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> so even though there's only four main breweries, they offer all different sorts of types of beer. So yeah, lots of variety available. Japanese beer, it's quality beer for sure. I like it. It's good. Yeah. All right. Another question. We've got like two questions left. Uh, let's see here. Um, Mindy's mom asks, hi, Mindy's mom. Question is, yes, Kombanwa, Eric, would you ever have a meetup in Southern California? Yes, definitely. I want to do a meetup in Southern California. I know there's a lot of people that watch my videos 
in the LA, Orange County area. So next time I'm there, I'm going to try to make it happen. So hold me to it. Last piece of sushi. Last piece. Mm-hmm. There was a point during this video when I never thought I'd make it to the end. <laughs> the end is near. We're going to make it. A little bit of wasabi on this one. I really like this, this roll. Yeah, this is a good one. It is a winner. Just light show. It doesn't need any show you at all, really, but just a tad, tad bit. There you go. Bit of a close-up. The last sushi. Oh. Oh. Mm. I'm going to savor it. Oh. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. Woo. Mm. oh boy. I wasn't supposed to show that. Best meal ever. I think that's the most sushi and sashimi I've ever eaten in my whole life. Mukbang. Mukbang out. Mukbang over. Mukbang. You guys know what mukbang is, right? It's Korean style eating. Kimi, is the, she's the one that I like the best. Oh my gosh, yeah, Kimi. That girl, she can eat. Those Koreans can eat. And of course, there's a Japanese girl that eats too. Her name is Kinoste Yuka. Oh my gosh, can that girl eat? I don't really consider myself a competitive eater. I mean, I can eat volume, but not, not really speedy. Well, yeah, I can eat speedy too, but I can't eat competitively you know, and win a prize, but I do like to eat sometimes a lot of food and sometimes quickly. I think part of the reason I eat so fast is because I was in the military and I've mentioned this before, but part of military training, they'll announce that it's time to eat and they'll give you like two minutes and then whatever you don't finish in two minutes, you have to leave behind. It's just the way it is. So they train you like that to just shovel down your food. So I think that's where I learned how to eat fast. Yeah. But the faster you eat, the more you eat, the more horrible you feel afterwards. So definitely take your time with food. I always pay for it afterwards. <laughs> so why do you do it, Eric? Good taste in food. You feel like you want to eat it fast. Well, especially hamburgers. Yeah. Are there any more questions? There, there might be one more. Hang on a second here. And then we'll uh, we'll do the rating. Last and final question is from Joe3Y612. And the question is, do you or do you not get some? <laughs> and yeah, I think that makes a good segue to the rating here. Sushi, sashimi, Eric Mealtime, episode number 200. 200 episodes. I want to thank you guys, first of all, for watching. Those of you who watch my videos, I really, really appreciate it. It's because of you that I make these videos, really. And the interaction that I have with you guys, I really, really appreciate your everything, your support. Yeah. Um... I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. So my heart goes out to all of you. Yes. I'm wearing a suit, so you got to trust me. <laughs> and I'll be starting a Patreon pretty soon. Maybe. I might do e-bagging pretty soon, like Patreon. So get ready for that. So, all right. It's time to rate this meal. I'm just going to say it with... Uh, I'm going to say it with three objects. Okay, so instead of rate this meal, I'm going to say it with three gestures. And here they are. There's one. There's two. There's three. So that was backwards from uh, how I normally operate here. 
what usually happens is the rating comes first and then they get some snack packs. So there's three of them. So that means that it is a six star, six Arrowhead ranking. Six, perfect six. I really thoroughly enjoyed eating this fabulous sushi sashimi meal and also answering your questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and the way to enter for your chance to win one of these fabulous get some snack packs the uh, contents will be uh, they'll be linked right up here if you are not familiar but the only thing you need to do is leave a comment down below on this video and I will choose three winners and they will be announced in the next episode of Eric Meal Time. So thanks again, guys. This has been great. I really, really appreciate your support. And we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.